All right. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our September virtual meetup this month. And thanks again for hanging out. Uh, as usual, so we got some agenda for talking about the upcoming events and then what's happening and what's new on the Azure platform since the last time we met. And then we have Julian from Microsoft to talk about to talk us through about the machine learning on the Azure platform and how we can apply some DevOps principles on that one. The upcoming events as similar to the last month, last couple of months, there are still a couple of uh, free training, virtual training days happening, which is still you can attend. The Azure Fundamentals, uh, which is a very good one and give you the foundation and the basic concept of the cloud computing and what are the uh, how they are implemented on the show. There are a couple of dates which you can attend and at the end of the event you can get a free voucher to sit for the AZ900 exam as well. And there is another one uh, dedicated to the Power Platform. Uh, it's happening on two days in the September and you can still register and do it completely online. Another major event is happening on this Friday, and it's going to take uh, for the full day, starting from 9 or 10 a.m., which is serverless days ANZ. It's organized by the serverless community around Australia and New Zealand, and it's, gonna, it's a really, really awesome event. Uh, for, uh, uh, primary fo primarily focused on the serverless topics and what's happening in the serverless space, regardless of the platform and the provider. And there are heaps of awesome talks and tracks already uh, registered and submitted. Their agenda is uh, published. You can go to that website, which you can see on the screen, check the agenda and see uh, what most interest to you. They've got two live tracks happening concurrently and, and there are a few recorded sessions also which you can watch. They are really, really great content. I'm not sure there will be recorded, Simon, for... Sorry, there'll be a what? We, there, there will be recorded for... Uh, yeah. All yep. of the talks will be available um, as on-demand sessions at a TBC date after the event. So the day will be great because we'll have live Q&A with some of the speakers. Um, and we might have some special guests from the um, Azure side as well dropping in. So, yeah, if you haven't got your tickets and you've got some time in your schedule uh, for some learning on Friday, definitely recommend it. Um, I've had the pleasure of watching every single session so I can do all of the captioning for them. Um, and there's some really good content in there from everybody really. So not just not just our Azure Azure folks and our Power Platform folks, of which there's plenty, but um, just generally speaking. So if you want to learn about things like testing, how to scale and do parallel automated testing, um, how you want to use containers and container layers to help you improve your serverless compute. Uh, how you want to improve your observability. Uh, yeah, really, really worth going along and having a look at that. Perfect. Awesome. Yep. So these are the events happening with the developer focus on the September. And it's me, Sam, and let's talk about what's new on Azure. So a couple of announcements and updates happening, and it, uh, they've gone to public preview. The, one of the important ones, again, on the serverless space is around the Azure functions, and the, we get the support for uh, deploying and building the Azure functions, durable functions with the PowerShell. Now we can use the PowerShell to write durable functions using runtime version 3 and PowerShell 7 uh, as a core engine of the PowerShell inside that runtime tree. Durable function basically are an extension to Azure functions for implementing a stateful workflows, orchestration work, like a parallel work we want to handle with the Azure functions and some complex scenarios which they support, which is really great extension. Azure policy, uh, the Azure team released a new GitHub action to the set of the GitHub actions, uh, the official GitHub actions. 
And this one is around the Azure policy. Azure policy basically is an Azure service that can be used to enforce organizational standard and compliance and access that compliance at a scale across the whole organization. Now with this new GitHub action, which is called Azure Policy Compliance Scan, we can use to trigger a compliance scan on multiple resources, on resource group, multiple resource group, subscription, or multiple subscription, and do that compliance check across all those resources. We can also set the workflow to continue or fail based on the compliance state of that scan, which is great for managing the Azure resources at the enterprise level or at a scale. There are a couple of uh, cool uh, public preview announcement around the Azure Cognitive Services. Uh, the first one is on Computer Vision API, and uh, now a new language, which is simplified Chinese, is added to the Computer Vision and the Read API version 3.1 for the folks who want to do the OCR integration works with this API. There are already other languages supported, like uh, if I remember the full list completely, English, French, Italian, Spanish, German, Dutch. I think these languages are already available, and now the simplified Chinese is also added. Another update is on the translator text API, which they added a few new languages like uh, Odia, Dairy, Pashto, and Kurdish and Northern Central Kurdish and Northern Kurdish uh, language support to this API as well, which is great for developers who are uh, leveraging the, the tech, tech, this text API for translation purposes. Another update around the Cosmos DB, the serverless tier is gone to the public preview. Basically, it's a consumption-based pricing tier that provides lower entry price for NoSQL users and uh, for the users who want to basically start using the Cosmos DB at the lowest cost. And basically how it works is it only builds and charges you based on the actual requests you need which you use uh, with your database operation, not what you set similar to the standard pricing tier of the Cosmos DB, which is really great because uh, it's truly serverless and you get charged based on what you really use. It's good for the, uh, but there are some caveats for that. For example, it's not good for high throughput workloads or it's good for some moderate performance workloads and for workloads that they don't need a steady throughput uh, with that one or really quick response or, uh, to the best is required. Couple of others is still in the public preview. Is one is the Cloud Shell uh, isolated VNet support. Uh, basically, Cloud Shell is a container image uh, of what you can see, and, uh, and as a browser-based experience, uh, a shell experience to interact with the Azure and Azure resources. Now you can deploy that cloud shell completely isolated in your own virtual network and control resources completely privately in that virtual network. It's very good for those scenarios, for example, you want to up, uh, work and apply uh, Azure CLI commands or cube control commands or um, put on the private resources, which they are not exposed publicly and they are not available publicly. Two updates on around the Azure storage. Uh, uh, both of them are around uh, blob storage. The first one is the soft delete is enabled on the container level. Now you can enable the soft delete feature on the container level and uh, any deleted container or their content are also, are also retained for the recovery and data protection purposes. So uh, that's one improvement feature, which is really good. Uh, NFS3, which is uh, basically network file system uh, support is added to the Azure Blob storage. And it's very helpful with uh, dealing with the large scale, uh, which required read heavy sequential work and 
operations and those workloads that data basically will be ingested once or very infrequently uh, with minimally modified requirements after that, but very heavy in, in terms of the read operations and at the largest at the larger scale. Uh, for example, for some analytics scale, uh, uh, for some analytics data at scale, or some backup and archives, or it's good for media rendering workloads and such. It's also supported both on the Winu uh, Windows and Linux, uh, and basically what it does, it allows you to mount a container from a blob of storage directly from a virtual machine or even from a computer on on-prem, which is accessed through, for example, Express Route. Uh, this feature is still in preview, but limited to few number of regions, but we are lucky to have that enabled in the Australia Southeast region. So if you have such a workload, you can start uh, review and using that feature. Couple of updates available around the Azure Kubernetes services and AKS. The CSI support uh, is added and is gone to the public preview and basically it's a driver to expose uh, 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 this CSI support is specifically around the storage and basically it's for enabling uh, uh, this allows us to natively use Azure files or Azure disk as a storage bag and mount them directly to the workload inside the Kubernetes. Uh, and basically, we can expose those native resources through this, dri through this driver into the uh, Kube workload. For example, Azure Files is good for the scenarios when we have the lift and shift, because uh, normally those legacy systems are working with the file shares. Uh, we can use Azure files for that one, but if we need a premium performance or very high throughput performance working with the uh, storage, we can use the Azure disk for that one, and that driver supports mounting Azure disk to the workload as well. Azure Resource Health also support and added to the AKS and Azure Kubernetes services. Azure Resource Health basically helps to diagnose and get support service problems from the Microsoft team and Azure Cloud team. And, and those problems that affects the Azure resources, so we can uh, basically go through and get the official supports with that one. It reports for the current state and previous states of that those resources. It's already available for a bunch of services inside the Azure, specifically virtual machine or IES space or PaaS space, as now it's enabled on the AKS also. And some of them could be like a maintenance, official maintenance support, or even if any outage happens inside the data center or on a specific resources due to upgrade or anything. So now AKS is fully covered by Azure Resource Health on the Azure platform as also. So these are the public preview announcements and updates. There are a couple of items gone to GA, uh, which we go to talk through them quickly. Cognitive services again got a new addition to the service, which is really cool and called Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader basically is an addition to the cognitive services uh, collection of the services and as part of the Azure AI platform it lets you to embed reading and comprehension into the application so you can integrate these features of the reading and comprehension into the application which basically helps readers to read and comprehend text as part of the application it's really great especially now because of all the distance learning and basically uh, helps to all the learners and the students in varied backgrounds, abilities and learning a style to be able to benefit from the application or from the learning platform or from that's a really powerful driver in that space. Azure blog versioning is also gone GA. 
This is a new feature in Azure Blob Storage, which automatically maintains the previous version of an object inside the Blob Storage. And now it identifies with the version ID timestamps. And both previous and current versions can be retrieved and are accessible by these uh, version ID timestamps. We can also restore the previous version if it's needed or, or if it's modified or deleted mistakenly. So those features are available as part of this announcement. Azure CDN uh, got an update to support the multi-region, multi, sorry, multiple origin uh, with that CDN, but that one is uh, specifically for the Microsoft standard CDN. So it's not available on the Akamai or Verizon uh, CDNs. So with the Microsoft standard CDNs, now we can deploy into multiple regions with the same CDN endpoints, and which is very good for global redundancy and high availability to have on the CDN endpoint. And basically, now users can route to multiple origins based on the different path or if they are coming from a different geolocations. Azure Kubernetes Service node image upgrades, which is another cool update, GA on the AKS, and basically it enables users to update the nodes on the AKS cluster and components uh, uh, and update the components something like a container runtime or if there is any uh, OS updates or critical OS updates without uh, without the need to go for a full up cluster upgrade. Before this update, if you want to, for example, update your Windows cluster to the latest Windows patch or security updates, you had to go with the latest upgrade on the cluster, but now you can go and specifically upgrade every single node with that one and trigger that update for the, uh, for the nodes in that cluster, rather than going for the full upgrade on the cluster level. Azure Functions PowerShell 7 is supported, as we mentioned in the uh, preview for the uh, durable function support. It's powered by this GA feature, and basically this enables developing and deploying Azure Function apps for production scenarios, fully supported by the PowerShell 7 and latest version of the PowerShell. It's also encouraged to, if you have any workload up, uh, on the Azure Functions with PowerShell. It's truly, it's really, really encouraged to upgrade now to version, uh, to the latest version, PowerShell 7, to get a better support, because very soon they're going to probably deprecate uh, the version 6. Not very soon, but it's it's encouraged and recommended if you can, and if, you're, if your workload is compatible, go and upgrade to the latest version. Cloud Shell Tools got a cool update, and basically the team open sourced the container image in the GitHub. It's now publicly available on the GitHub, which you can contribute towards the project. And basically, as I mentioned earlier, it's a browser-based shell experience, which you can interact with your Azure resources. And, and probably, as you know, it's uh, the whole technology behind that is uh, container-based, so the whole cloud shell is a container, which uh, you can run it um, in a browser-based or even, as we mentioned earlier, on a, uh, your own virtual network. It's completely open source. If you have any features or if you have experienced any bug or any issues, now you can communicate with the team and contribute to the project. App Service now supports the .NET Full Framework version 4.8. It's now completely rolled out to the all Azure regions, and uh, it's enabled by uh, which you can start to um, use and benefit from that one. If you want, for example, ben to benefit from the bug fixes or any security enhancements as part of the .NET Framework 4.8. Uh, but you need to upgrade your application to target 4.8 first and then deploy to the Azure and app services with that version. So there is one deprecation announcement happened on the Cosmos DB. So initially the team announced that, uh, did I miss something? 
Oh, yeah, so Cosmos DB zero performance impact. So basically, this feature enables uh, to modify, change, and add new indexes to the Cosmos DB databases yeah. without impacting the write operations and read operations. At the moment, before this update, we can, uh, there was no impact on the write operations if we manipulate the indexes or add any indexes. But now, with, uh, uh, but there was impact on the read operations if we transform or change the index while that index was, uh, operation was going on. With this improvement on the Cosmos DB, that uh, bottleneck is gone away, and now there is no impact, it's, which they uh, refer to as a zero performance impact on the index changes on the Cosmos DB, which is a great feature. Another uh, update or announcement on the, around Cosmos DB is the team initially announced that the application for the Python SDK, specifically for the SQL API, to be happen on the August this year, but now they extended for another two years and it's gonna happen on 31st of August on 2022. And it's uh, recommended to start thinking about upgrade all those applications or if you are using this case from version one or two to start using with uh, SDK version four. So you have still got two, two years time, but it's really encouraged to start from now because we have enough time for testing and make sure it's compatible. There are a couple of updates. Uh, other updates as part of the platform. One of them is the standard IP and load balancer behavior changes. Uh, basically, it's more about the uh, new networking API version, which is 2020-0801, and it's more about the availability zone support. And basically now if you have these resources like a standard IP or a standard load balancer, what uh, changes basically if we want to summarize the changes is if uh, previously if you deploy any of these resources with no zone as specified, they automatically deploy a zone redundant resource for you. But it's this behavior is changed now if you create those API, those resources with this new API, which is the API version is 2020-08-01, which is the latest API for the networking. With these changes, if uh, you don't specify any zone for these resources. They deploy the resource by default as a non-zonal resource. If you specify a single zone, basically they deploy the zonal resource for that part. And if you dip, and if you specify multiple zone for that for those any of those resources uh, in that region. Uh, they automatically deploy with the availability zones on and the resource will be the zone redundant in those regions if the region is supporting that uh, availability zones. Uh, and the point is there is that change won't be applied to existing resources of the standard IP and standard uh, load balancer, but if you provision any of those resources with this new API, so uh, they will be uh, covered by these new changes. Azure Well Architected Framework basically is introduced, which is really cool one, especially for uh, organizations with the medium size or large size uh, design on the Azure. And basically, as part of this initiative, they're trying to bring on a industry standard similar to what, for example, AWS already had. Uh, as part of uh, reviewing and assessment of the architecture and design on the Azure cl uh, Cloud Platform. And basically, they assess and review the design and architecture on the five major pillars, which are, uh, and mm, there are a massive list of questionnaire, and the assessment is a very long assessment to go and in details and in depth to assess your architecture and basically recommend, uh, for example, if there is any cost saving or if there is any security or 
Yeah, there are five major pillars which you can go check the frameworks and make sure uh, you have the uh, best practices applied to your design architecture for that workload or organization. AKS service got a few other updates, uh, not uh, uh, basically some separate updates, not uh, specifically announcement. One of them is uh, the team reduced the cluster creation to less than five minutes. Now you can deploy a case cluster regardless of the Windows or Linux in less than five minutes inside the Azure uh, platform. And another cool one is they added the native integration between Azure Keyboard and Azure Kubernetes services. So Kubernetes already had the concept of secret management, uh, built-in secret management. But this feature is great for organizations which they don't want to use the built-in feature of the Kubernetes, and they want to have the integration with the Key Vault and store all the credentials, secrets, and certificates inside the Key Vault. And with this native integration, that can be happen, and Kubernetes and AKS cluster can communicate directly with the Key Vault for those for the storing and uh, retrieving any of those secret elements. And the cool thing is uh, that CSI driver, again, is open source and is built by Microsoft. It's publicly available. And as the first uh, consumer, HashiCorp has started to adopt that CSI driver. And basically, they use that for HashiCorp Vault integration in a very similar fashion, a similar to the AKS. These are. A couple of updates we had around the Azure platform, similar to the previous months, thanks to Microsoft for offering us 20 discounted Microsoft exam vouchers. So if you are interested to sit for any of the exam vouchers, so it's a great time if you want to do that, because most likely everyone is working from home. You got the heaps of uh, free time for studying and upskilling yourself. And that's a great opportunity to sit for the exam and get yourself certified. So we can offer and provide uh, 20 discounted vouchers for that one. They are basically um, discounted at a 50% of the exam fee. And they must be, the point is they must be used by 31st of October. That means you need to book your exam by 31st of October. So if you are interested, Ping us in this uh, or reach out to any of us, Simon, myself, or Arafat, and we can facilitate that for you. And as usual, please go and join the community newsletter. That's a great effort done by uh, Simon's team, and that's a very tailored newsletter with the topic from the community, uh, developer community, which you can receive monthly 